Well, welcome back, 7th grade friends and neighbors. This is part two of how to make pie charts. This is what a pie chart looks like. There's only one value per label. Do you remember what a value is? Do you remember what a label is? A value is a number like 38 or 23, and a label is a word like cows or sheep. If you only have one value to go to each label, a pie chart might be a good chart to make. If you only have a few labels, seven or fewer, then a pie chart's a good choice. You, instead of making a column chart or a line chart or a scatter chart, a pie chart's a pretty good choice if you only have seven or fewer things to make a chart out of. And especially if you want to show percents of a total, well, pie charts are the best. You can't get better than that. Now, if you have too many labels, it's really messy, and you should not do a pie chart. This pie chart's terrible. You should not make a pie chart if it has lots and lots of slices. Seven or fewer is good, but don't don't make a messy chart like that. Maybe you should have made a column chart or a different kind of chart instead. Okay, so we're going to go out and make a simple pie chart, and here's the information that we need. On January 1st, your company employed men, 365, and women, 140. So this is the first chart I want you to make. This is going to go on sheet one. So here I am on my spreadsheet, and I got columns and rows, and I'm up here in cell A1. And if you move with the right arrow key on the keyboard, you know the keyboard has little arrow keys on it. If you press the right arrow, it'll move one cell at a time. And you could go all the way to the end, but how far does it go? We don't even know. The way to get to the end really fast is to hold down the control key. Hold down the control and tap the arrow in the direction you want to go. If you want to go right, hold down the control key and tap the right arrow. Hey, I went all the way. Look at that. Uh, column Z. I'm going to do control left arrow to go all the way back to the beginning A1. Now you could press the down arrow and down arrow and down arrow till you get all the way down to the bottom or you could just hold down the control key and tap the arrow key in the direction you want to go. I'm going to do control and then down arrow. I have, look at that, 1,000 rows. That's a lot of rows. I'm going to move up to the top again. That's control up arrow. We'll move all the way to the top. Now if you're in the middle someplace, you can always get to A1 really fast by doing this key combination, Control home You know there's a key on the keyboard called the Home key? Did you ever find that? You could click out in the middle someplace, hold down the Control key and don't let go, and tap the Home key. Control home will go to A1. All right, so we're going to make a chart, and here's my rule about making charts. If you're going to make a chart, do not type in cell A1. What did he say? If you're going to make a chart, do not type in cell A1. Leave A1 blank. I'm going to type in A2. I'm going to type men. Enter. I'm going to type women. Enter. Do not type in A1. If you're going to make a chart, do not type in cell A1. Leave it blank. So in cell B1, I'm going to tell them what these things are. I remember men was 365. Is that right? 365 and women was 140. I think that's right. 140 and enter. Make sure you enter. Now you got to tell people, what are these numbers? What are they? They are the employees, aren't they? Employees. They were employees on January 1st. I'm just going to type employees. There. Leave A1 blank. Did I say that three times yet? I'm supposed to say it at least three times. Now I'm going to make a chart. I'm going to start right in the middle of A1. I'm not going to get on the line. No, don't get on the line. Don't get on the little blue box. No, I'm not on the blue box. I'm right in the middle of the cell, and I'm going to hold the mouse down, hold the mouse down, hold down the mouse, hold down the mouse, and cover them up. Not too much. Nope, that's too much. Just cover up. Just, nope, too much. Just cover up just enough. Okay, and then let go. I highlighted my data. How did you do that, Mr. Lyshenko? I started in A1. It's blank. There's nothing in A1. When you want to make a chart, leave A1 blank. I know some students are not going to do it right. Leave A1 blank. So I hold it down, hold it down the mouse, hold down the mouse, hold down the mouse. Now here's how to insert a chart. It is so easy. Insert chart. I mean, how much easier can it be? Insert chart. Boom. Done. Look at that. It even says employees on the top. Well, this is my chart, but it's not very good. And it gave me a big panel over here that says setup and customize. I'm going to do customize. Let's customize this chart. I always start with these categories. There's five categories, and the one I start with is chart title. It's the easiest thing to do, chart title. It says chart title. Right now it says employees, but I'm going to say I'm going to add some extra stuff. I'm going to say employees on January 1st. There, that looks good. Now, 
this chart has some little formatting that you can do. There's four little choices down here. It says you can change the font title. Let's see. You could change any one of these. There's a bunch of them. You choose whatever you want. I'm going to do wide, but just to show you, look, it's a lot different. And you can change the size. I'm going to make it really big, like 30. I can change the color. I'll make it, I don't know, maybe I'll make it purple. You choose what you like. Quit copying me. And you can make it bold, look bold. Or you can make it centered. Look at that, centered. Okay, centered. There, I put a title on and I'm done with title. I'm going to close it up with this little down arrow thing. Here's my five categories, and I've already done chart titles. I always start with the title. Then the next thing I always do is legend. I go to legend next. The legend tells you what is blue and what is red. What does blue mean? What does red mean? We already know blue is men and red is women. But I can change the legend and it has a position. I like to put my legend on the right. You can put it where you think is good, but I like it on the right. And you can format this legend. There's four different ways to do it. You can change the font. Maybe I'll make it white again, and you can change the size to something, and you can change the color to something. You choose what you think is good. You can even make it bolder italics. So I think this chart looks pretty good, but how much is men and how much is women? I can tell the men is big, it's blue, and the women is smaller, it's red. But how do you tell what the number is? So that's a whole other category. I started with the category of titles, then I did legend. The next one I always do is pie chart. That's my third one I'm going to do, pie chart. Because underneath pie chart, it says slice label. The slice of this pie it has going to have a label. Right now it says none, but I don't want that. So don't forget that slice label is under pie chart. You might want to write that down. You might want to pause this video. Pie chart has slice label, and I want... Do you want the words there or the numbers? Let's see what words do. Look, if you put a slice label that uses the label, it says men and women, but I already know that because I looked at the legend. So I'm going to put the value in there. That looks pretty good to me. The numbers are kind of small, so I'm going to make them bigger, maybe pretty big, and maybe I'll make them a different color. Maybe I'll make them white, and maybe I'll bold them, make them kind of thick. Hey, how's that look? That looks pretty good. I kind of like it. Now, if you don't have a panel on the right-hand side and you want to edit your chart, you could click on the chart, but where's my panel? Where's my panel? It never showed up. You can do these three little dots. I want to edit this chart. Ah, uh, yeah, I got my panel back. Remember, we're customizing. Customize has five categories, and we fooled around with the title and the legend and the pie chart. Okay, that's about all it is for part two. Let's move on to part three.